Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games with a preview from the game company Phalanx. Freedom, gentlemen and ladies, freedom. This is the same company that did Hannibal and Hamilcar. All right, so you know they can do quality, but what is freedom? All right, think, just going to give this to you, Twilight Struggle meets Stronghold, but lighter, in my opinion, on both counts. You're going, huh? All right, asymmetric. So you've got the Ottoman Empire. Pasha, I think was the commander's name, if I remember right. He is attacking, or this is the third siege of, and I'll get it wrong, Missolonghi. I think I'm saying it right. It's this beautiful city that sticks out on like a, a finger of land and then is surrounded on most of one end by lagoons. Uh, the lagoons make it extremely hard to attack from that area, not to mention they can get uh, food, fish from this resource. Also, uh, the front battle area is either open plains or a real marshy type ground. And then the city folk have built up these big earthen walls. And on top of that, I can't remember the name, but there was a, a, a I think an Italian engineer that came in and built these, I want to say 17 bastions. And they're all with interconnected firing, and they could use cannons and mortars, and, and they're interlocking fire. So as these Ottomans approach through the plains, they could get uh, fired on from multiple areas. So what you have is about 3,000 Greeks. You're playing uh, one side as the uh, defender of the city with 3,000 Greeks. you got to watch your lagoon area. You got to make sure you're repairing walls as they get damaged. You got to make sure they're manned. Uh, there's this cool part where you're also getting, there's some influence stuff going on with Greater Greece as they're in rebellion from the Ottoman Empire. So you can get support or lose it or different bonuses can kick in. I'll show you that in a board in a little bit. Gorgeous board. Uh, but the Ottomans by Pasha. So I believe the, the war starts, uh, or the third siege starts in April 1825. And the uh, sultan tells Pasha, you either take the city or I take your head. There ain't no backing down here, <laughs> okay? So it's on. And come, uh, not much progress is being made. And come fall, Muhammad Ali the Great, mm -hmm, who is like the governor of Egypt, sends a very large fleet, 170-some ships up, uh, I think another 10,000 Egyptian troops. They do a really good job of coming in through the island lagoon area and cut off the food. The Greeks begin to starve. They finally attempt to break out, and there's a slaughter. Uh, it's almost like uh, it felt to me like the Greek Alamo. So uh, it really galvanizes the resistance uh, by the Greeks to the Ottoman Empire and uh, helps them really rally a larger base. So let me show you the map. I'm not going to pop back out to me. I think I've done enough explaining, but I want to add in now because I'm not going to come back to me that this is a conflict I didn't know about. I love that. Uh, it's a Greek designer, I believe. I cannot pronounce his name, so I will not try. But I love that asymmetry. Um, the defense has enough stuff. I mean, they are reacting to what the Ottomans are doing, but there's enough pressure and tension that they're in it. They're not just camped out while the attacker's doing everything. So you get this nice flow back and forth, that twilight struggle of events uh, popping, or you're using the points for special actions. It's a very nice feel. The rule set uh, is uh, actually fairly basic. Pretty quick read through. Uh, let me show you a little bit of the board. All right. First thing to remember is this is pre-production board. As awesome as this all looks, I'm sure it's going to look even better. Uh, it's beautiful, but I can tell already that the colors will be sharper and everything on the uh, on the final production. Maybe a little brighter. But I wanted to show you already. So we're zoomed in on the city proper. You can see the walls, sorry, the walls that are coming around here and where I put the blue units, all right, the insurgent Greeks. Those are the forts that have to be held. This isn't set up or anything. I just put them here so you can visually see them. Uh, and then all of these shore spaces have to be held as well. If the Ottomans or the Imperials 
uh, take any of these uh, spaces, uh, they will win. And they also win if uh, their more morale drops to zero. There's a morale track up here that I'll just let you take a peek at in a little bit. Um, and the, uh, the simple way the Greeks or the insurgents win is they hold off for all six rounds. It's literally only, I'm showing five, but it's only six rounds. Or they can drop the morale track, which is up here uh, for the uh, Ottomans. Basically, uh, they can't keep their uh, army or their mercenaries paid. Here's what I like, though. Let me show you. Look, you can see just we've got these clouds that are rolling in. So it looks like you're, you're almost, well, to me, in an airplane flying over. Beautiful coastline that's coming in, the the, uh, the ocean and the clouds that are kind of seen there. Let me pivot around here and you can kind of get that feel. So you can see we're going right off board, but it's gorgeous. So the Ottomans will be staging up here and then moving their troops and trying to flood in and attack these walls. You can see the lagoon that surrounds and, and uh, some of the islands that are in play. There's another one down there and right there. So you get a nice lay of the map, and this is literally the city you're uh, defending. If we roll up, there's a nice touch. So you've got kind of like greater Greece, and I've got it set up here so you can see these are all red. But these are key areas, so they match, all right, geographically. It just sits on there and matches. But these are in play as well because if they're flipped to the insurgent side or if you've got them on the imperialist side there's bonuses that are given to either side and i just found these they're so simple but they're so well done because they literally are just mirroring the map piece that goes in there but at a glance you can tell all right, what's going on in the situation here? And as soon as I opened the box and thought, man, these are, you know, this is a pre-production model because you can just see the care that's gone into this. And I love that aspect of it. Now you have your charts and your morale uh, up here. You're tracking just the six turns. Um, I'll show you the cards here. I'm actually going to move off the map and I'll show you the cards. And, uh, and really that's it. So let's take a look at these cards. All right, we got two decks of cards. You can see this is the deck for first, uh, the first three rounds, one, two, and three. And you can see it gets a little bit darker here. And uh, these are the last three rounds, four, five, and six. All right, let's take a look at uh, the first three rounds of uh, cards here first. So you'll notice right off the bat, you have numbers at the top. And if you use these action points, you'll ignore... The rest of the card you will not be doing the card ability or the text down here but the little circles tell you uh, so red means this is going to be the Ottoman or the imperialist uh, card ability uh, blue would tell you and again there's blue corresponding here that this is for the Greeks the insurgents but again if you're using the action points and there's a multitude of different actions you can do um, then you will ignore the text on the card. Now, if you're not using the action points, you're the imperialist, and you decide to take the card action, you'll simply do here so you can see supplies uh, to the insurgents uh, are minus two. So you can see it's very straightforward. And then down here, very small text, which I can barely read, but that's fine. That's just flavor text. That's historical flavor text that's on there. No, no import to the game, but it's there to let you know how history worked out. Now here's a cool thing. So, Twilight Struggle, a lot of times you have a hand, so you'll have a hand of seven cards. I don't know if I drew seven off there, but you'll have a hand of seven cards, and you've got to play them down and work them down in a way that oftentimes the uh, event, or in this case the card ability, will trigger, and it's not even an event that triggers for you. Now that's part of the joy of that game and how do you mitigate the event if it's for the opposing team and not for you. But here you have an option where if you simply use the action points it's discarded, you do not have to trigger that event. So it's a little less painful for you. But there's a cool action in here where maybe I really wanted, I'm the imperialist, and I really, as the Ottomans, I really wanted this minus two supplies to trigger. You just used it as the Greeks for its points, did some actions, it went into the discard note. Note, 
the discard pile. I can come in and discard one of my cards in order to trigger that card ability. And that is really one of the uh, nice things that distinguishes this um, from some other card based games because otherwise you've just got a lot of the area movement and the battle and control of spaces that's going on and then the cards like Twilight Struggle in my opinion that makes the game a little bit more straightforward and maybe a little bit less painful so the cards are clearly going to uh, send you down some roads that are more historic in nature and influence uh, aspects depending on what you're trying to do within the game. So probably enough set on the cards. I'll show you some of the different art on these. All right, so you can see again, we have uh, action points up to four down to two. Uh, if they're gray, they're neutral, so no effect. And this card is neutral as, as far as its ability as well. I should have pointed that out. I'm glad I ran across that. So uh, the art's gorgeous. Uh, I love the flavor text and the simplicity of using the card for its action points and not having to worry about the painful thing happening if I have a bunch, if I'm the Greeks and I have a bunch of the Ottomans cards in my hand. However, knowing that the uh, Ottoman on their turn can trigger those off. And when you have your cards out, it's I play a card, do a thing, the other player does it, I do it, and it back and forth to cover the route. So the game, even in its uh, prototype phase or its uh, preview phase, even comes with what I'm sure will be mounted cards, but you get an insurgent player aid and an imperial player aid, walks you through all the different actions, so everything is very easy and straightforward, covers the different rounds that you have, administration and whatnot, and you can just walk through the symbol explanations and everything. So it's very nice. Of course, you know with Phalanx, this will all be uh, nicely mounted and everything. It was just great to see, even in a preview, that it was at this stage, even though I know nothing's final, that um, it made the game easy to learn, even as a preview copy. All right, see you guys. Look for this on Kickstarter if you're interested.